Hello again, this is Dr. Marge, and we will continue with our classification of dental caries. Number three classification is by the number of surfaces involved. We call it simple if it involves the caries involves only one surface. We call it compound if the caries includes two surfaces. For example, in this case, you have occlusal and palatal or lingual. And we call the caries complex if it involves three or more surfaces of a tooth. For example, for example, here you have occlusal, you have buccal, you have mischal. For this one, you have facial, you have distal, and probably it includes also the lingual. For this class for cavity, you have facial, you have proximal, the mischal surface, and the lingual surface. Okay, so simple, compound, and complex cavities. Next, classification number four is classification by surface name. You have single surface, occlusal is O, mischal is M, lingual is L, distal is D, incisal is I, buccal is B, facial is F. Paano naman do kung labial? Kunyari, uh, class 5 on tooth number 11, labial. Oh, instead of using labial, kasi mapapareho sila sa letter L, you just use F, or oh, facial. Okay? So, single surface, occlusal, mischal, lingual, distal, incisal, buccal, and facial. So, if you place the classification, for example, class 1, class 1, 1, 6, occlusal. Okay. Class 2, 1, 6, M, O. Oh, ito yun, combination surface. Misho, occlusal is M, O. Misho, incisal, M, I. So, pag misho, occlusal, o pag may occlusal surface, you think anterior ba yun or posterior? So, pag misho, occlusal, posterior yun kasi may occlusal surface. So, this is class 2. Okay. Pag misho incisal, oh, may incisal edge. So, anterior tooth yun. Ah, tapos, may proximal surface. So, that will be class 4. Mm. Next, linguo occlusal. Pag linguo occlusal, anong ngipin muna? Lagi mong aalamin kung anong ngipin. Posterior. So, lingual surface. So, class 1. Next, distolingual or distal surface involving the lingual. So, pwedeng class 2, pwede rin, ano pa, class 3, pwede din. Pwedeng sa posterior, pwedeng sa anterior. Distolingual, distolingual, o may incisal na Kasama, then that will be class 4. Bocal occlusal. May buccal surface, edi posterior yun. Occlusal, posterior yun. So, this is class 1. Ano pa? Misho occluso distal. Misho occluso distal. Naku, ang dami na. So, this is class 2. And the last one, mesho, okluso, disto, bakal. This is class, ano? Two. Okay. 
So you have to determine first what tooth is involved, anterior tooth or posterior tooth, okay, before you choose the GB Blex classification. Next, classification number five. Classification by extent of caries. So we have incipient caries or reversible caries or non-cavitated caries. As the first evidence of caries activity in the enamel, so you will see some white spots in the tooth. On smooth surface, it appears opaque white when air dried and will seem to disappear. It is a demineralized enamel that has not extended to the DEJ. Enamel surface is hard and still intact. So if you can see some demineralized enamel, do not use too much pressure on your uh with your explorer. Ay, may demineralized enamel ka. And then you'll try to to press hard on the demineralized enamel. Ay, yun, naging cavitated na. And you know naman, by this time, the enamel does not regenerate by itself. Huh? But maybe when you graduate, you can invent something that would make the enamel regenerate. Then we go to the next. No cavitation. Lesion can be remineralized through plaque removal and control and application of fluoride or even calcium phosphate. Remineralized lesion is either opaque black or brown to black. It has a hard surface and appears the same, wet or dry. At present, we have what we call SDF. SDF. This is silver, diamine, fluoride that we use in children. Silver diamine fluoride. Pag lahat ng teeth niya, uh, maraming caries, maraming active caries, hindi mo naman bubunotin yun, no? So, what do we do? We apply silver diamine fluoride, and what does this do to the teeth? It makes the teeth, it makes the caries, uh, the soft caries hard, makes it arrested, and... And you preserve the tooth in the mouth. Okay? The disadvantage is that all the brown spots look black. So you have to explain again to the parents. Or else uh, the parents would tell you, oh, Doc, what did you do to my child? All the teeth became black. Uh, so before you do any procedure, you have to explain very well. Especially for minor patients. Explain to the parents. Next. Cavitated. So we had non-cavitated caries or incipient caries or reversible caries. Here, you have cavitated caries. The enamel surface is broken. Butas na. Cavitated. Lesion has advanced into the dentine. Remineralization is not possible. Treatment by tooth preparation and restoration are indicated. So you have to do tooth prep. The number six is based on the rate or speed of caries. We have acute caries or chronic caries. For acute caries or rampant caries, disease is rapid in damaging the tooth. So if you see children with a lot of caries, with rampant caries, almost on all teeth, and color brown, usually yan yung masakit yung ngipin, hindi pumapasok, hindi makapasok sa school palagi. Because that is acute caries. There is pain. That is infectious, usually in the form of many soft, light-colored lesions in the mouth. If you use your spoon excavator, you can excavate the caries. These are very soft. They have less time for extrinsic pigmentation, hence the light color. Kasi nga, ang bilis. Very fast ang, ang progression ng caries. Compared to chronic, slow, or arrested caries. May be slow or may be arrested following several active phases. Slow rate resulting from episodic demineralization and remineralization due to changes in the oral environment. 
lesion is discolored, dark, and hard. And the slow rate allows time for extrinsic pigmentation. So, pag nakita nyo sa children, ganyan, itim na itim. Ay, itim na itim yung ngipin mo. If you try to excavate that with your spoon excavator, it's hard. Matigas. No? And it's usually not painful. So, we leave it as is. An arrested enamel lesion is brown to black, hard, and as a result of fluoride, may be more caries resistant than unaffected enamel. Kasi nila, dinagdagan mo na ng fluoride eh. Mas marami na siyang minerals dun sa ngipin. An arrested dentinal lesion typically is open, and this dentin, the dentin is termed as sclerotic or ebernated dentin. So, as I told you a while ago, if you have acute caries, we do not extract all teeth of the children because they have acute caries. What we do, we try to make it slow or arrested or chronic by using fluoride. It's either acidulated phosphate fluoride or SDF, silver diamine fluoride. And then we go to Backward caries. We call caries, we call the condition backward caries if the spread of caries along the DEJ exceeds the caries in the contiguous enamel. For example, you have wider caries in the DEJ area compared to your caries cone in the enamel. So, balik tad mas malaki sa likod kesa sa Mas malaki sa dentin kaysa sa enamel. Kaya backward, baliktad. The caries then extends into the enamel backwards from the junction. When you compare that with your forward caries, sa forward caries naman, the caries in the enamel is larger or equal size than the caries cone in the dentin. Okay, same size or larger in the enamel compared to the dentin, we call that forward caries. Again, backward caries and forward caries. Then we have residual caries. Caries that remain in a completed tooth prep, whether by intention or by accident. It is not acceptable if it is at the DEJ or on the enamel. It is acceptable when it is affected dentin. So, what is affected dentin? Okay. Caries dentin consists of two layers. You have outer layer, which we call infected dentin. And we have the inner layer of dentin, which we call affected dentin. So, what's the difference? In infected dentin, it contains bacteria. They cannot remineralize and they must be removed. Compared to your affected dentin, the inner dentin, it has no bacteria, can be remineralized, and should be preserved. So when you look at the dentin part, pareho silang discolored. Okay. So when you use your excavator or hand cutting instrument, you use sharp hand cutting instruments so that you know whether it is infected dentin or affected dentin. Okay. In tooth preparation, it is desirable that only infected dentin be removed, leaving the affected dentin, which then may be remineralized in a vital tooth following the completion of restorative treatment. Thank you for watching.